PET is positron emission tomography, which is a medical imaging technique which uses a radioactive isotope typically bound to a drug. The drug is injected into the patient and uh, the radioactive isotope decays. The decay produces a positron. The positron, of course, is an anti-electron. That is a particle just like an electron except with positive charge. The electron and positron annihilate, producing two high-energy gamma rays, which are then detected and allow you to map the distribution of radioactive tracer in the patient. Detecting the gamma rays is quite difficult. Uh, essentially, uh, the gammas are absorbed in a special crystalline material which converts the energy of the gamma into some thousands or tens of thousands of visible photons. And those visible photons are then detected by a photomultiplier. Uh, photomultipliers have been used for many, many years in high energy physics. Initially, a PET scanner produces what we call lines of response, which, is, which are lines drawn between the pair of detectors that have simultaneously detected the two gamma rays produced. In a typical PET scan, you might have 100 million of these lines of response, and a computer then actually figures out the most probable distribution of the decays, and the image that the clinicians look at is actually the computer-generated summary of where the decays took place. The most common use of PET scanners is in oncology to map potential secondary cancers inside a patient. A drug called FDG is used. FDG is a glucose-like molecule which is taken up by rapidly metabolizing tissue and the radioactive isotope accumulates in the sites where the metabolism occurs and hence the PET scan can map out regions of rapid met metabolism and secondary cancers are readily detected by this method because they involve rapidly dividing cells. PET scans typically produce rather fuzzy images because the uh, method of detecting the gamma rays is not very precise and because the positron which is produced in the decay will typically travel a millimetre or so before it annihilates. Only actively metabolizing regions of the body are shown in the PET scan and it can be hard therefore to locate precisely where small secondary cancers actually are. Are they in a lung or are they in some nearby organ? The big idea of uh, combined PET MRI scanner is the, to exploit the ability of MRI to distinguish between soft tissue types as well as between bone and soft tissue. This should give us a much better indication of where the hotspots of activity in the PET scan are actually situated. A further benefit is that MRI scans can be run continuously at the same time as the PET scan because MRI does not involve any harmful radiation. We started with a conventional MRI magnet which is a cylinder but we cut it in the middle and opened up a gap between the two halves. The gap enables us to actually install a fairly unmodified PET system. The only modification required is that the light guides which um, take the light from the crystals where the gammas are detected to the photomultipliers where the signals that are needed are produced are a meter long rather than being quite short. Uh, thus the light guides are coming out into these wings and the, PMT, the photomultipliers are situated at the ends here in a region where the magnetic field is already quite low and the photomultipliers work satisfactorily. So our approach is to take a conventional PET system and modify the MR magnet. Um, this is in comparison with all the other approaches which, uh, which involve staying with a conventional MRI magnet and using a highly modified PET system which fits wholly inside the magnet. 
the end result is that um, our system is about five times more sensitive than methods using um, unmodified MR magnets.